Hello friends, so today here I have is Max in the Midnight Tower of Time. So I'm making a read aloud video. If I ever do earn anything, I will donate it to the Ukraine Kairosis. So I would appreciate it and so would the people who are facing this crisis. For you to like and subscribe to my video. According to the funny facts, the world's largest potato is... Francis Zippet. I'm reading Max and the Midnight's Tower of Time. Max and her pals are back in action, and it's their most amazing quest yet. Hey, why aren't there two Maxes on the cover? Because this book is a double dose of fun. There's twice the adventure, twice the laughs, and twice the mystery. Ooh, what's the mystery? Sorry, no spoilers. Well, then can I borrow the book? Sure. All in good time. Max and Midnight Scout. Or Scout. Paul or Jean. Mary, you're back. Did you swipe any food? I can't handle another meal of crabgrass and tree bark. Karen, we can talk about our high fiber diet later. We gotta get out of here. Why? What's happened? Prepare for your mind to explode. Down there in the sea, I just saw myself. Uh, yes. Those things are called mirrors. No, no, it was a girl. And it was a girl, and she looked just like me. She had some old geezer flew out on the sky on a pitchfork. Was she a witch then? I guess so. But why would a witch turn herself into Mary 2.0? I had to find out. I followed her to the market square. A crowd was gathering for a speech by the king. I got her alone and asked her to polite, super politely to explain herself. Ah, then she puts a hex on you? No, but there's something different. Something, definitely some funky magic going on. All around, people were turning into demons. I was able to escape before I got demonized too. But that witch was after me, and she meant business. Hmm, you're right, Mary. We can't stay here. Pack up. You got two hours of daylight left. That's enough to put us put some miles behind us. So long, Bajovia. You won't see the likes of me again. So Yeah. Okay, one. Ah, Max cries Kevin. He sees me coming. You're just in time to experience my latest innovation. Newsflash, I have no idea what an innovation is. Me neither. Just kidding. Is but that's one of those fringe benefits of hanging out with Kevin. It really ups your vocabulary game. I call a library card. Kevin's really good library. He's beaming hands. Uh, he's beaming as he hands me a small, a small square of parchment. Consider this your admission to the sensing world of reading, he announced. Says, remind me later to ask him what psilocybin means. Now that's something I don't know. Right now, I'm more focused on the this library kind of thing. It's just this piece of paper with my name on it. Precisely, how does it work? Aldemarity, my dear Max. Whenever you want to read something, you merely show me your card in exchange for a book. When you finish the book, you can return it to me. It's as simple as that. Okay, here's my card. Can I borrow a copy of Max in the Midnight? I'm afraid they're all checked out at the moment. But I do have a medical volume you might find interesting. I don't know what that is, by the way. 
So if anybody knows, just tell me in the comments. Healing power of legions. It's highly informative. The illustrations, however, are a bit nauseating. Mm, I'll pass. Hey guys, it's Cedric, one of my classmates from night school of Ben Jovia. He's also some sort of the newest member of the Moon Knights. Not that I've been fish officially invited him or something, but what would I say? Want to join our band of adventures? Is what? Nope. That sounds way too dorky. I mean, I think he'd say yes, but sometimes it's pretty tough to guess how said what feels about you. You know stuff. People are tougher to read than books. Kevin, Max and the Moon Knights was a great story. You're too kind, old bean. Idiom. Sure, how's the work on the school going? I asked Scrolling. Kevin rushes. I nearly, nearly reached the thrilling conclusion. I refer, refer to the course of that revelation that you have a twin sister, Max. It's absolutely shocking. Shocking. For once in his life, Kevin may have picked up the wrong war. Shocking doesn't even begin to cover it. My stomach turns into somersaults as I picture the girl I dueled in the market square. There's no doubt she's my sister, but I have so many questions. Who are our parents? Is Mary her real name? Is Max my real name? Max, Max. Where did she come from? Why were we separated? Max. Oh, sorry. I was just saying, Cedric has returned this book so you can borrow it. Uh, nothing, said Tom. I changed my mind. I changed, I've changed my mind. I'll see you later, guys. Bye, Max. Farewell, Toodaloo Cheerio. And don't lose that library card. I won't. I decided to take a walk and clear my head, but my top thoughts keep landing on Mary. It's almost been a week, over a week, and then since she came face to face. Why haven't I looked for her? Duh, because I'm not sure if I want to. I've spent 10 years as the adopted niece. A musically challenged tomb tour. It's kind of goofy, my goofy life. But my but my life is the way I like it. Am I ready to share out some of it with Max Wannabe? With some sort of Max Wannabe. Without realizing it, I'm heading steadily towards the castle with the familiar. But the familiar figure leaps into the shadows. Halt! Who goes here? Senior? Senior. What a, what a cocky dink. That's my name too. Senior, it's me and Max. Oh, apologies, Max. I get carried away. It's just really fun to say, Who goes there? And no, we do not have, we don't have a public restroom. And... Since when are you in a royal sanity? I'm not. I'm just testing a new magical device called the malware. You can see this the enchanted suit of armor to detect threats to the king. Kong, Kong, Black. Is that the alarm? No, that was a fart. Oof. And a Fragrant one it is too. That's girl senior. I'm going inside to get some fresh air. I walked down a long hallway and pushed the golden door to the throne room. King Conrad is here. So is Sir Gabba. And the head of the 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 head of the royal guard and the big nose guy tuning up. His little is my uncle Bodrick. Oh, playing 
you the pango film. Here's a tip, cover your ears. Roses are rosy, except when they're not. Violets are violety, not blue. But how does one sing of the colors not? It's green, it's brown, it's tan, it's your, it's cream. That depends on the state of your nose. A tumor can't know for sure what it would seem till he pulls out a hanky and blows. Honk you. Hi, everybody. King Conrad gives me a warm smile. He's happy to see me. Or he's really glad the song's over. Probably both. Hello, Max, he says. What's on your mind? It's tough to decide where to begin. But I don't know it starts somewhere. Uh, remember how s s you sent Sir Gab out to mm, search for, you know, my look like? He nods. The mysterious Mary? Yes, I remember. Well, did you, you know... Did you know it? Not all, he answers. You've always been an orphan and an only child, as far as we knew. Until this came along. He's holding a locket that he showed me in the week, the one with Mary's picture in it, which reminds me, where do you get the... The tail behind it, Gabout replies, is a modest one. I'm afraid no fire-breathing dragons are... I'm Okay. No fiery breathing dragons or wizards or magical spells. Care to liven it up with music? Some music? Plunk a plunky plink. How did he even get it upside down, bud? Oh, let's go. Maybe next time. It started perhaps a month ago, Gabba one. I learned a series of robberies on the outskirts of Benjovia. I sent an alvin guards to investigate. And after several days of looking... She had upon, happened upon the threat in progress. Look, I know it tastes like ranch and roadkill. But if we're too choose, choosy, we'll starve. You there, stop! I rescue in the name of the king. The two robbers ran. Alva grabbed hold of them. But they broke away and escaped into the forest. Then, only then he realized that he pulled the locket from the tall thief's neck. And she brought it to us. And, well, you know the rest. So one of those criminals were Mary? We don't know. It was too dark for Alva to see their faces. He did hear them speak, though, King Conrad. They have distinctive ac accents. Alva, and the subs Alva suspects they're from Clonk. C Clonk? Uncle Broderick looks terrified, which doesn't exactly shock me. The man's afraid of napkins. Anyways, I'm curious. What's clunk? No idea. But some words sound scary. Like tofu. It makes you break your knee break my neck into hives. I don't think life works like that. Okay. 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 It's closely it's a close society, the king explains. Clunkins are extremely suspicious of outsiders. They especially dislike Benjamins. We've had no contact over them for a decade. Searching for her could be very dangerous. Not where I call over my shoulder when. So this is chapter two, I guess. So see you next time and wait for part two, which I hope I can broadcast tomorrow. So see you guys. Bye.